end is often the beginning. Thank you very much. Could the clerk please call the roll? There are nine present. And uh, I understand uh, Marcus Savaglio is on his way, so we should see him shortly. Next is the Pledge of Allegiance. We have a special guest tonight, Boy Scout Connor Miller, is from Troop 801 at Grace Episcopal Church. Connor, please come up to the front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Connor, thank you very much. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last Common Council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the minutes, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Uh, next item is confirmation of mayor's appointments. City Attorney. We just have one. Uh, the mayor submits the following appointment for your consideration. John Matiska to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Amanda Salazar, whose term expires April 19, 2021. Thank you very much. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to a presentation of the 2017 GFOA Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting by, uh, by City Administrator Daryl Hoffland. The award is a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting. The document that was submitted for consideration is the popular annual financial report, which I think you all received as an attachment. Uh, the award reflects the city's commitment, uh, not only of its common council, but its staff to me meeting the highest principles of government finance reporting. In order to receive the award, the city had to satisfy nationally recognized guidelines. The document in this award re reinforces the city's strategic plans, focus areas of governing and fiscal management and communication. It is the city's goal to provide open and transparent financial documents to empower its residents, staff, and officials to make informed decisions regarding the future needs of the city. This is the first year GFOA has bestowed the city with this recognition. The city is only one of six municipalities in Wisconsin to have received this award. I want to thank Daryl for very generously uh, presenting this to me, but Daryl, Kerry, the uh, finance department, our new finance director, they all really deserve, uh, you know, the credit for this, as well as all of our department heads who gave them the information that they needed. So Daryl, thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'll let you uh, put it in a proper spot, okay? Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call up Wendy Schmitz. Today, it's my pleasure to recognize Wendy Schmitz, who has served as the director of the Senior Activity Center for the past 13 years. During this time, Wendy, Wendy supervised the Senior Activity Center renovation project in 2009 to make a former elementary school much more functional as a senior center. This renovation was funded entirely through the Friends of the Senior Center. Wendy also worked to change the image of the Senior Activity Center to build membership and attendance and create an agency that relies heavily on the expertise of retirees. 
The programming has changed from a more sedentary activities to very active offerings for our community. The Senior Activity Center became vibrant, dynamic community center, encouraging wellness, learning, and recreation for Sheboygan's diverse semi-retired and retired citizens. Together with the seniors, Wendy has planted flower beds, raised bed gardens, She's created a haven in a rundown neighborhood. She escorted hundreds of people on 12 trips from Branson to New York City and also facilitated trips from Cuba to cruising on the Danube. In 2018, over 47,000 visits were made to the Senior Center with an average daily attendance of 200. The most important but immeasurable numbers are the activities, events, and friendships that spilled out into the wider community due to the social connections that were made at the Senior Activity Center. Wendy also facilitated the work of the Sheboygan for All Task Group as they work with AARP to develop an action plan and work to make Sheboygan a more livable community. I don't know if this is going to be a, just a small way of saying thank you to Wendy for all the great work that she's done. You know, I talk to uh, many of the people who that deal with her every day and work and help and volunteer with her. Many of them are in the back of the room, and they just said some, some great things about the time and the effort that, that Wendy has put forward. So, Wendy, we want to issue this certificate of appreciation from the city of Sheboygan to Wendy Schmitz uh, for 13 years of dedicated service from July 25th of 2005 till April 19th of 2019, signed by Daryl Hoffland and myself. Congratulations, and I hope you have plenty of time now to do all those extra things on your bucket list. I normally have a lot to say. I don't. Um, I couldn't have done it without those great people at the back. And, um, and some of the fantastic department heads and many of the older people who've been very supportive. I think the best thing that's happened to me is Daryl Hoffland because uh, when I first came here, I was charged with saving the senior center. Along the way, the council has often um, wanted to hand us over to the nonprofit organization, but Daryl gave me his full support, and I think that that has been shown in the fact that um, you've now elevated the position to be a director of senior services, and um, I just think that there's a great future, and I thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. This is also a time when we have to say a few goodbyes at the last council meeting of this year. And I'd like to give a certificate of appreciation to all the person Ron Rinfleisch for two years of dedicated service. During this short period of time, he served as the Finance and Personnel Committee Chairman. He served on the Law and Licensing Committee, the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee, the Board of License Examiners, which he was chairing, the Capital Improvements Commission, the Senior Activity Center Commission, and the Sheboygan Transit Commission. We were really able to take advantage of all the experiences <laughs> that Ron has had in his past, in his volunteer life, and his work life. And Ron, thank you so much for the time you gave us. And this year we also said goodbye to Alder person Rosemary Trester. Uh, Rosemary served for three years of, of dedicated service and she served on the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee, the Law and Licensing Committee, Public Protection and Safety, the Library Board, the Historic Preservation and Housing Rehab Loan Commission, and the Sheboygan County Emergency Medical Services Council. Rosemary was not able to be with us today because her husband had to take a trip to the hospital out of town. And I'll get this to her tomorrow. Um, a few other announcements. Uh, coming up on Friday, May 3rd, is the National Day of Prayer. The Sheboygan uh, group will gather at noon at Fountain Park United Methodist Church. 
We also are conducting the Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation, that including April 1st through April 30th. We challenge our residents to conserve water, energy, and other natural resources on behalf of the city through a series of informative, easy-to-use pledges online. Just do your part this Earth Month by going to mywaterpledge.com to participate. Our police department is offering f uh, free violent intruder active shooter training on April 26th from, uh, rather April 24th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Sheboygan South High School. Uh, you can contact Sergeant Andy Kudniger to make a, an, a res reservation. We need to have, know how many people will participate. This training is called ALICE, Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Escape. It's an effort to help educate more community members. The Sheboygan Police Department is now offering this free ALICE training program. And then Arbor Day is coming up on April 26th. Uh, at 10.30 at J.C. Park, we'll have a Sheboygan celebration. Uh, the city will be receiving its 41st year of continuous tree city recognitions. That means that Sheboygan was the first community to meet the guidelines set up by the Arbor Day Foundation and has met those guidelines for every year since. April 27th will be Drug Take Back Day, and it'll be available all day, 24-7, uh, at Walgreens on 14th and Erie in the Sheboygan Police Department. And then winter parking rules, the alternate side parking will end on April 30th. And um, you all saw the announcement about our new fire chief, Eric Montanello, and he should be starting around mid-May. And for the council members, I just want to give you a reminder that tomorrow we'll be meeting in the lobby at 7 o'clock for a photo, and then uh, we should be able to start our meeting at 7.30. And it's just 49 more days until we plan to move back into City Hall for our Common Council meeting on June 3rd. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we'll have the public forum. We have one person this evening, Jennifer Lurkey. <coughs> you state your name and address for us, please. Jennifer Lurkey, 111 Highland Drive, Glenbeela, Wisconsin. Thank you. You all have five minutes. Thank you. I'm here today regarding Resolution 204-1819, which is on the agenda for tonight's Common Council meeting to voice uh, the Armory Community Project's concerns with that resolution. One, we feel that it's premature to enter into such a contract right now as demolition can't proceed until mid-June. Two, we're aware that somebody else is interested in the building, and I can confirm this as well as I, I'll be touring the building with them on April 24th. It's a reputable developer with a proven record not only in this city but across the country. They are looking to turn it into an event center with a restaurant and a hotel in the rear in the rear of the site. They've done two similar projects in Wisconsin. Three, the city would be bound under contract if this developer made an offer to purchase or expressed an interest in pursuing a redevelopment agreement. Based on how the contract is written, the city would be allowed to break the contract, but the city would incur a financial penalty. Why enter into a contract that may need to be broken? Why approve a contract that could incur a financial penalty? Why approve a contract without quantifying how much that penalty would be? Best enterprises will likely be ordering equipment and materials, placing deposits and down payments on them, in a mobilization effort so that they can begin in mid-June. Why waste their time and taxpayer money? Four, the resolution says city officials are authorized to enter into a contract. The resolution was not amended to say that the mayor had to wait until the developer completed his due diligence. If the resolution is approved, he would be allowed to enter into the contract whenever he wants. The re resolution should be amended. Five, the resolution says demolition shall not begin until the city attorney provides a written opinion to the city administrator, confirming that A, review by the state historic preservation officer has been completed and B, demolition may occur in compliance with the historic preservation regulations contained in section 15916 of the Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance. 
on such a contentious issue the city attorney should have to provide a written opinion to common council before demolition can begin not the city administrator six there are several portions of section 15 9 16 that we believe the city is not in compliance with and there'll be more to that more to come on that on a later date seven because more than one acre of land will be disturbed the city needs a permit from the wisconsin department of natural resources before demolition can begin however this is missing from the resolution and the resolution should be amended to include it and also again there's the larger discussion of the public trust doctrine we have brought the public trust doctrine to the city's attention at numerous meetings over the last six months and we're continually dismissed a letter from our attorney regarding the public trust doctrine was included as a communication in your common council agenda tonight and i hope you had the time to read it on page four number nine on page four of that letter there's a reference to a survey commissioned by the city the survey is entirely consistent with documents which we've provided to common council in november of 18 and also the historic preservation commission in march of 19. 10. It's concerning to know that this survey, which is dated February 27th of 19, nearly seven weeks ago, to the best of our knowledge, um, has not been shared with the Historic Preservation Commission for their March 19th meeting, Finance Committee in preparation of their meeting last week, nor Common Council for your meeting tonight. And we feel that it is a critically important piece of information to have while discussing the future fate of the armory. Number 11, our arguments um, are dismissed saying it has no effect on demolition, and that is true to an extent. However, why tear a building down if it's unclear if the site will ever be allowed to be sold or used for private development to be anything other than empty parkland that generates no tax revenue for the city? Why not keep the building so it can be an asset to the community and generate pilot property tax, personal property tax, sales tax, and associated visitor spending sales tax and hotel room tax revenue? We urge the Common Council to step forward and re-enter negotiations with the Armory Community Project. And number 12, you're likely to hear arguments that the demolition bids went up and the city needs to lock the price in right now. A 2017 discussion with city staff indicated that the 2017 demolition bids only included removal of the building and filling of the hole to avoid disturbing more than an acre and avoid the aforementioned DNR permit. The new 2019 demolition bids not only include demolition of the building and filling the hole, but also removal of all the interior sidewalks, ramps, driveways, whatever, yada yada, topsoil grass. Two acres of land will be disturbed that's the cause for the increase. For all the above reasons, we urge that you vote nay tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include <coughs> items 2.2 through 2.18. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eyes. Motion passes. Um, under reports of officers, item 3.1 will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee of the new council. Under resolutions, resolution 4.1 is resolution number 209 of 1819 by Alderpersons Reinfleisch and Boren, authorizing the release of funds to the Harbor Center Business Improvement District. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I make a motion to suspend. Second. Uh, is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none. Alder person Reinfleisch? I move to pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The resolution is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. Will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten. 
Ten ayes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 and 4.3 will be referred to uh, the Finance and Personnel Committee and the Public Works Committee of the new Council. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 305 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Duma's referred resolution number 187 of 1819 by Alder Persons, Reinfleisch and Born, authorizing the City of Sheboygan to enter into a contract with Municipal <coughs> Property Insurance Company for building property insurance coverage and recommends approving the resolution. Alder Person, uh, Reinfleisch. Move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alder Person Born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a clarification from our finance director. <coughs> uh, the resolution says not to exceed $130,000, and then the latest premium on the, on the document itself is $127,727. Is that the final amount? Marty? Is there any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ten ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 306 of 1819 by the Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred RC number uh, 289 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee and resolution number 190 of 1819 by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen expressing the sense of the Council that transitioning to an automated garbage and recycling collection program is in the best interest of the city and recommends approving the resolution. Alder Person Sorensen. <coughs> Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Alder Person Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to support this tonight. Uh, I think it's a good idea, but I did have one question on the, on the $4 fee that, we're, that goes along with this. Uh, what are going to be the parameters as we go forward as far as an increase of the fee, keeping it the same, possibly lowering it? If, maybe if Director Beeble could maybe address that for us. Director Beeble. The plan is during the 2020 budget process, we will be getting, gathering further detail. One of the big key factors is going to be our contract for tipping and transfer of our recyclables for processing. That is due at the end of this year. We will be going out for new proposals uh, very shortly to get some better pricing so we'd have that in advance already of, for, the, for the budget process so we can work on that figure what it actually would be. Um, however, in today's news, we'd heard that um, waste management is now in the process of acquiring advanced disposal, therefore <coughs> leaving really just one vendor in our entire area to really negotiate with moving forward. So that will play a key factor as we continue to deliberate and figure out what this final cost will be. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nice. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 307 of 1819 by the Committee of the Whole to whom is referred RC number 290 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee and resolution number 191 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the Department of Public Works to purchase seven new way auto car <coughs> automated garbage and recycling collection trucks and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Sorensen. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 
Ten ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is RC number 308 of 1819 by the Committee of the Whole, to whom is referred RC number 284 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee and Resolution number 192 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Sun Graphics Media for the creation of materials for public education and outreach related to the automated garbage and recycling program and recommends approving the substitute resolution. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I recently received an email from another vendor interested in bidding on this project. I am still very frustrated that we did not put this project out for bid, and this bidder is also a local marketing firm. Uh, I would uh, respectfully like to request that uh, this be amended to go back to committee. Okay, we have an amendment. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have an amendment on the floor. Uh, discussion on the amendment. Alderperson Donahue. Um, I would like some information from Attorney Adams with respect to items that are typically bid and items that are typically <coughs> not bid. This is a, this is a service <coughs> contract. Uh, I don't know that I can say typically or, or atypically. Um, it is not required to be uh, bid under our uh, statutes or our ordinances. I'd like to ask um, DPW Director David Beeble to tell us the process he went through on this. Yeah, again, as I reiterated at the Committee of the Whole meeting, typically professional service contracts like the one as presented this evening, they're a negotiated type of contract. We work with vendors that we have relationships with, have past experience with, uh, Sun Graphics had uh, some experience that we've dealt with with our stormwater education, informa uh, information education program that we partnered with the county with. So typically, uh, this is not uncommon. We, we ne enter negotiations with, with vendors like this. Uh, we do it routinely with engineering contracts. Uh, just for instance, we entered into contract with Excel Engineering for engineering around the, the uh, arm, uh, not the armory, the, um, the tannery site, for instance, that, that development, the Badger Lofts department complex. So, again, that was just entered into a contract with them. It's a routine. Um, I think that we've met with Sun Graphics a couple of times in, on, in terms of the scope and the deliverables on this. We've gone back and forth with some of the terms and conditions. Um, I have all the confidence that this is a, a contract that will provide value to the department as well to the city as a whole. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's under the 50,000 threshold. And even that threshold, in a lot of cases for our professional service contracts, we, we don't, and, it's in, and the process isn't, it's not a bid. We would never go out for a bid for a professional services contract. <coughs> When we go out for, for, for what we call is a, it's a request for proposal, and then we use a process called quality-based selection. So it's not even based on price. It's based on the staff's you know, prior work, their resumes, what, what are their deliverables, what is their timeline on some of them. So there's, there's many factors that go into consultant type of selection. It's not where we're bidding a construction project and we're going to select the low bidder to, to build this project for us. So there's a lot of intangibles that go into it. Um, you know, today we just had an interview with the Sheboygan Press. We had some talking points and, you know, this is where we're talking. We want to get some frequently asked questions already developed so that we really want to engage the services so we can get this up and running because we know this is going to impact the entire community. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Um, I am uh, going to uh, uh, vote against uh, the referral back to committee. I understand uh, Alderperson Savalio's uh, concerns, um, but here's the situation. Uh, we need, as a city, to do business on a wide variety of uh, business concerns. We enter into agreements on a regular basis with all sorts of providers. Um, and that 
entering into those contracts is often predicated on the relationship that we've had in the past with those, with those providers. It's of concern to me that we not complicate relatively straightforward service contracts over much. Um, the, uh, my concern is that the contract that uh, Sun Graphics is entering into um, is very complicated. Um, it's, it's really, it's a great big hammer hitting a pretty tiny nail. Um, and uh, if we put these kinds of matters out for uh, requests for proposals and so forth, it's my concern that contracts not be so complicated and requiring the person who wants to enter into the contract to retain legal counsel to review provisions such as indemnification and so forth. Um, what we're doing with the garbage uh, trucks and the garbage collection is a big, big, big deal. And I think that there's going to be a fair amount of, mm, if not controversy, a lot of concern on the part of city residents about what this means and how they're going to be able to get carts out to the street or into the garage or whatever. <clears throat> I reviewed I reviewed the contract. I, I appreciate, and I think as council people, we need to appreciate our skilled staff who assess these things and say, you know, <clears throat> we've worked with Sun Graphics before, we know their work, we know this is an important project, and we know we need to get going on it right away. So if we put this off and um, set it out for, I would say if we're going to send out requests for proposals, it should be very broad-based. And, um, and spend considerable time um, uh, evaluating the, those proposals. And if it's another company that ultimately we decide on, there's a very complicated contract to negotiate. And there'll be a need to hire an, that purveyor will have to, to hire an attorney to review the contract and so forth. So while I understand, you know, sometimes when you're in business, <coughs> You have a reputation, and that's how you get business. And I think that this is a, a sensible approach right now, based on our past experience with this particular firm. I think we need to get moving quickly. And so for that reason, I'm going to oppose the, the, the amendment, but appreciating what Alder Savalio has had, his thought process here. Alder Person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I, I agree with uh, Alder Person Saviglio on this one. $42,500 $42, is a lot of money. Uh, we have some very talented uh, ad agencies in Sheboygan besides Sun Graphics Media that have very, very good reputations. And uh, I just think uh, it's a good idea on something like this. Uh, it's very creative on their part, and I'm sure uh, I would like to see what other what other, what other ad agencies in Sheboygan or maybe even outside of Sheboygan have to offer us what kind of a program they can come up with. There may be some ad agencies that have already done this type of thing for other communities, and I just don't think it hurts to see what's out there and, uh, and uh, you know, come up with a very innovative program, not saying that Sun Graphics isn't, but this is $42,500, and I think it... It doesn't hurt to go out and see what's available. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Although I don't, I don't want to keep chewing on this on this bone until everybody wants to go home already. But anyway, um, I disagree with with the situation. I understand in the in a broad stroke of the brush that we we want to be competitive and we want to send things out for bid. But I agree with Mary Lynn that this is this is something that. We shouldn't. We as as alders are supposed to be um, helping the city grow, helping our our management team um, move forward in positive direction. We should not be telling them how to do certain things and who to be working with um, to some degree. I agree. Forty-two thousand dollars is a lot of money, uh, but in the in the big picture of the project, it's not. And I guess my concern is here we are at the twelfth hour again. 
We have a big program that we're looking to roll out, a lot of communication. This company has worked with the city for many, many years, um, as Mr. Beeble had, taught, had, had explained. Um, they have history, they have understanding, they know our inner workings, they, they know the community. They are local. The other thing is that I, I do want to point out is that it's also the responsibility of said competition that if they want to be involved, then they should be reaching out to the city. We, we don't want to have to send out publications for every little thing because then it's going to take months and years to get anything done and then to review contracts and to dig mm -hmm. into that. We're just adding, you know, the proverbial red tape that we all hate um, with government. So let's, let's let our great management team do what they need to do. Let's uh, vote this down. We can always improve things later, but we are on a timeline and I respect uh, the overall concern but we have a lot to do and we have to get things going. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Well, I'd just like to say that my office is responsible for a lot of the communication in the city. And um, right after our Committee of the Whole meeting, uh, we started to see a lot of things popping up on social networks and things like that. And one of the worst things we can do is let that fester because then those things that are said on those social networks become the facts that people believe. And so I challenged the department right away to try to get something together and they said they're waiting for this so that they can get some professional help to do a good job and, and prepare um, you know, the website that they need, the brochures that they need. And so I really don't want to see this held up because uh, we're just going to create a problem for ourselves. Uh, Alderperson Donahue, I'm sorry you had two kicks at the can. Uh, anybody else need to speak? Okay, with that, with no other discussion, Kirk, please. A point of sure. So the shortest uh, process that I could see here, if it were referred to the uh, FNP committee of the new council, uh, would be first of all, it would get referred back. Uh, I think referring it back would be a signal that the sense of the council is they want to uh, go out for some kind of requests. Uh, that would probably, uh, it would probably behoove the Public Works Department at that point, hearing that vote, to probably begin on that. Uh, and I suppose if they were to run through that process, uh, because there is not a, uh, <clears throat> there's not a particular process in place, they could probably run the RFP process without coming to the committee and then direct refer the the final response of that, uh, you know, the final decision uh, to you, uh, another contract, or maybe the same one if, if the same uh, uh, company wins it. But that would still likely mean that it would have to come to, it, the, the committee would look at it um, at their next meeting, which isn't going to be for three weeks probably, and then come back to the council in four. So that's probably the shortest timeline is four weeks. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion on the amendment, David? I guess I would be concerned with uh, starting any RFP process without, I guess, parameters from this body uh, since they're the ones asking for it. Again, when we go out for RFPs, it's qualification-based selection. So the selections that I would consider high importance for this project may be different than those in this chamber. I used that criterion when we started the negotiations with Sun Graphics in terms of rolling out the automated garbage selection pro, uh, collection program for the city. Uh, we have you know, timelines we want to meet. We have uh, specific criteria and audiences that we want to meet. So um, that would be my only concern of drafting a type of document and then having it rejected because, um, it, again, it might not meet the selection or who, 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 who they might choose in the end. 
Okay, any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll on the amendment? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I can go now? Yeah, no. Is it working now? No. Nope. Oh, nope. there you go. Okay. Four eyes, six noes. Motion fails. And then we're going back to the motion to accept and adopt and pass the substitute resolution. That's before us for further discussion. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the main motion? Eight ayes, two noes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 .5 is RC number 309 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 203 of 1819 by Alder Persons Wolf and Sorensen, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2019 budget. It recommends approving the resolution. Alder Person Reinfleisch. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is RC number 310 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 204 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Reinfleisch and Boren authorizing the demolition of the armory contingent upon completion of legal requirements and recommends approving the resolution with an amended contract. Alder person Reinfleisch. I move that we accept and adopt and pass the resolution with amended contract. Thank you for your motion and support. Under discussion. Alderperson Savaglio. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would just like some clarification. If uh, we do end up going the other route that was referred to in, um, in public forum, uh, is there a penalty for signing this contract and then backing out? And how much is that? City Attorney. Well, you haven't approved the contract yet, so uh, so if you vote it down, the contract isn't isn't in place. Understood. Uh, it, but if we were to approve this contract, what would be the penalty for backing out, moving forward? I'll have to take a look at the document. I think the other thing that's kind of inferred here that uh, that we would sign this contract before all the work is done and the evaluation of this other party that wants to come to Sheboygan. And I was the one that took the call from the other party. And what they described to me is that they wanted to come in and see the armory, which will happen, I believe, next week. Then they wanted to put their, final, put their final plans together and then make another meeting to sit down with city staff, explain those plans. And they wanted to be ready to uh, try to claim some tax credits, uh, new market tax credits that would be awarded in May. And they assured me that they would have all of their requests and everything ready so that uh, we would know whether or not they had a project well before the end of the 90 days was up. So I don't see this happening. And what I pledged to do at the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting was to not sign that contract until we knew that all the legal requirements were, were finished and, um, and the other party had made their presentation to staff and we made a decision or brought it back to council for your approval. Thank you. 
Article 12, uh, just to answer your question, Alderperson Savagli, Alder per, uh, uh, Article 12 indicates that uh, if there is a termination, the city would pay the contractor for the services that were performed up to that date, uh, that written services received, plus reasonable termination or suspension expenses. So there is no termination fee. However, expenses that would uh, reasonably be incurred by the contractor as a result of our terminating or suspending at the time, uh, we would have to pay those. It's not specifically set forth in this contract simply because the timing of that is going to determine that. Is it possible that litigation would occur or we'd have to negotiate those things uh, most likely uh, in that circumstance? Thank you. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to be voting no against this today. I think that this, this honestly doesn't really show that we're kind of open for business. I think it's been indicated that we have a serious uh, developer that is interested in the lot and the property as well, too. Um, for me, I think we need to show good faith um, and give them a fair opportunity and not show what the, the city administration's priority is with this property as well, too. Um, Again, I don't know why we're still in such a rush. We're still within the 90-day hold period. Um, even if we did approve this, um, and then we got back a phenomenal uh, proposal, which we don't know yet. Um, from the beginning of this discussion with the Armory, since I've been on the council, um, I, I kept saying, and I still have hope, that we need to give a chance and show good faith and be open for business when folks come forward with a good plan. Um, and quite frankly, I don't feel like this is fiscally responsible. <coughs> Um, for us approving a contract without knowing what the other options are moving forward. So I'll be voting no, and I encourage my colleagues to do as well. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Attorney Adams, what you were just describing about any possible fi financial liability, uh, that, would that assume that the contract is signed? Because the mayor indicated that he's not going to sign the contract until we've exhausted everything that he just, that he just said. Exactly. That was, uh, it appeared to be Alderperson Savaglio's question. Uh, based on my initial response, he wanted to know what would happen after it were signed. If it's not signed, it doesn't apply to anybody. It only becomes a contract once it's signed and there's, you know, consideration, et cetera. And I was glad to hear uh, there was some, there was some con concern about this expressed at the Finance and Personnel Committee and when the mayor assured the committee that uh, he was not going to sign this demolition contract until all the hoops had been gone through and that we had assurances from the from the city attorney that we could proceed so that made me comfortable with it and that's why i'll support this tonight but i did have some questions and they were answered thank you thank you alder person decker thank you mr mayor uh i also am concerned with uh some of the what's going on here i i really think we should uh put a pause on this and uh, I propose a, uh, a hold till the next council. Is that a motion? Yes. Is, is a motion to hold. Can you review the uh, procedure now? So, so you've made a motion to uh, uh, forward it to the following council, I assume to are you referring it back to a committee of the council or just to the council? Just, just for a, a three-man hold, three-person hold. Uh, we don't. Th yeah, I don't we, think that's germane at this meeting. Yeah, that that, yeah, that hasn't hap happened yet. Um, you'd have to follow the pr pr procedure for that three-person hold. Um, the process that would happen if you refer it uh, to the next uh, next council. Uh, would be it would it would simply get referred to the council and a decision would be made at, at the the following uh, following meeting. And then, so we have a motion and a second to hold this item um, and mm -hmm. refer it to the new council. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is there any? Is this debatable? Uh, a motion to refer is debatable. Yes. Okay, is there any... What's the, what's the difference between referring back to the new council whole? Because we yes. have, this is the last meeting of this council. We have to clean our docket out. Mm -hmm. So we, we can't hold something. We have to refer it to the, the new council. It's the only way that we can operate at this particular meeting in the last meeting of the council year. Okay. And, and the three-man hold hasn't happened yet either. So there hasn't been a... Mm -hmm. 
you haven't done what needs to be done to do that, although the what mayor is, is correct, were you to do that, I would tell you that you can't because, because this is the last meeting of the year. Okay, and other discussion? Need the Jim Boring? Uh, where would it go with the new council then? Do we have to determine if it, it would it, would it go back to finance and personnel where it originated or is that who decides that? Well, at this point, if you refer it to the new council, I believe we'd put it on the next agenda that the new council, when the new council oh. is seated and then it will be referred to a committee at that point. Okay. It wouldn't you know, have to be referred to a committee and because of the time frame, it would not go to the next meeting, which is tomorrow, um, and it would not go to the meeting after that, uh, which is a week from tonight, because uh, it is not allowed to be on that agenda. So it would go to the first meeting in May. Any other discussion on the motion to hold and refer to the new council? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Four eyes, six nose. Motion's lost. So we're back to the, um, the motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution with an amended contract. Under further discussion, Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple of real quick st questions. Um, in, in our finance and personnel meeting, uh, Chuck, it was discussed that certain things uh, the mayor was going to want to make sure that they were T's crossed, I's dotted kind of thing. Um, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm actually in, in agreement with moving forward is it, it puts more pressure on said groups that uh, theoretically have, have interest in the property. Property has, ha has been available for a long time. Um, if this group is truly coming, and they're going to make decisions uh, by May, I mean, how soon contractually does Mike have to sign the said contract uh, where we might have some liability to it? Like right now, it's not signed, so it's just a, literally a piece of paper, an offer, but how long is that offer available before he has to sign? Well, uh if you're asking the legal question of how long can he just simply hold off on his own on signing it, the answer to that is, is you know, to some extent permanently, although you as a council have some ability to, to force his hand um, in, in that circumstance were he not to sign it. If the answer is practically, I'm probably not the right person to answer that, but practically um, there does come a time when this uh, contract is, is just going to get so old that um, the, the, the other side won't sign it. Well, um, and the reason I bring it up, Chuck, is, um, is the fact that m most contracts have a, vel a validity date. I'm just wondering if this contract has that because, you know, is it 30 days, 60 days that the contract is actually alive before it actually um, dies? This uh, contract, my recollection is, and I'm just... Uh, I believe I'm, it was 120 days. Yeah, I believe there was, uh, was that in this or was that in the RFP? That's what I'm looking for. There was, there was an RFP, but then there's uh, the contract information as well. I'm just quickly going through. Chad, can you help us out? No, in the contract there is none. Uh, I was just making sure that it wasn't there. So per the, in essence what happened, there was the request for proposals. Uh, the contractor could choose to simply exercise, you know, the language of the request for proposals at the end of the 120 days from the time that they put in the proposal uh, and say we choose not to sign it solely for that reason. Uh, <clears throat> On the other hand, they haven't signed this yet either, um, and uh, 
you know, uh, frankly, they could refuse to enter into it if they could choose to enter into it after the 120 days, if they so choose, uh, but they could also decline to do so after the 120 days. Okay. So the, the legal answer still is, if, if they want to let it go, you know, long, they, they can do that. It's just that they're unlikely to do that. Right. I, and I guess the reason I'm saying that is I support continuing to move forward because it puts pressure on the potential opportunity to, to get involved or not get involved doesn't mean that the city is actually going to, you know, Mike said he's going to either sign it when all of the T's are crossed, I's are dotted concept. So again, if we, if we don't have a timeline on the said contract, then we still have time for the said gr company or group to come look at it, provide the city some direction and information, and we can still give Mike the ability to continue to move forward. Correct me if I'm wrong. Nothing to correct there. Thank you. Any other discussion? Alderperson Sorensen? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I disagree with Alder Wolf's statement that this contract puts pressure on other outside groups. I think it shows that the city has a preferred preference on which direction it wants to go. Um, and I do have a question for the city attorney regarding the public trust doctrine. Do we have a clear answer of, of you know, what, what's going to go on there? What, if there are any legal implications um, in the future or, or development with that site? So the item on the agenda is this particular uh, contract and the public trust doctrine does not, is not implicated at all by this contract. Any other person, Phillips? Thank you. I agree that it puts pressure on um, the potential uh, prospective developer. I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. I think that we need to give um, appropriate time for uh, prospective developers or redevelopers to come up with plans and secure funding. And I think in the past we've fallen short on allowing that um, opportunity of time. And my understanding is from what I'm hearing that if we agree to um, this demolition, it's still up to the mayor to sign the actual um, agreement. But in all due respect, um, Mr. Mayor, that does leave all of the, the power in your hands. And I think that that is a decision that should be made by the council. And I think that we need more time and information um, in order to make um, that decision. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Um, I note the cost in the current contract is 319000 And the prior contract, my memory is 197000 Am I... Does anyone remember what the first contract for demolition was? Or can you say it was substantially less than it is now? Chad? I recall that the first contract was 122000 less the current bid. In other words, the current bid is 122000 more. That's correct. All right. Administrator uh, Hoffland? Yeah, uh, I have the specific numbers. So 319500 is what's before you. The previous uh, demolition proposal was 197,10 or 100. So 122,400 is the difference. All right. So I guess, and I understand the reason that the contract is so much more expensive now is that there just aren't that many folks interested in it. Is that a fair statement? I mean, based on, on your understanding of this situation. Chad can respond to that. What I understand from purchasing agent Bernie Romer is that fact that we've gone out to bid a number of times and the people that have gone through all the work of putting together a bid and the project not moving forward have chosen not to rebid on it. One being Vinton Construction, who was the low bidder the last time this went out to bid. So um, I respect the fact that um, we have as we know from the letter, we have given many developers many opportunities to come forward. Um, we do have this last one, and I think it's worth pursuing. Um, it's a reputable contractor. I think there's significant public trust doctrine issues with that plan, but you know we'll see how that all turns out. But to the extent that we don't enter into this contract now, with the assurances that have been given to us that 
and just reasonably the mayor is not going to, I hope, sign a document uh, that puts the, the city in legal jeopardy. I think we can all rely on that. Um, my concern is, is that this, you know, this contract goes away and the, the developer decides that, you know, for all the reasons that so many developers have had trouble with this building, that that developer doesn't want to go through, um, then we're back out for bids and then we're in the soup again. And so my view is, is that um, I, I view this as more as, as just a contingent that protects the city's financial interests. If a real developer, if this particular developer comes through and he's excited or it's excited and there's, there's some real possibilities there that we can debate, I think that's terrific. And I think we should give full, you know, f pay full attention to that, but just to have this in our back pocket in case. So I think we do have a fiduciary responsibility and I think if we vote against this, that we aren't paying attention to that. It's already cost us more than more than $100,000 and goodness knows what, what the additional cost may be in the future. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderperson Phillips. Thank you. Just for clarification, um, from my understanding, from what I heard from Jennifer Larkey, the difference between the first proposal for demolition or the first bid for demolition versus the current one was a difference in the type or amount of work type of ex, uh, amount of excavation. Is that correct to say? Daryl, did you want to respond to that? Chad? Chad? As I, as I recall from the purchasing agent, the request for bids was the exact same as the previous one. So I don't know what the, re the discussion is about the additional excavation. I think Bernie just pulled up the uh, previous request for bids and changed some dates and sent it back out. Anything else? Other person, Savaglio? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to uh, echo uh, Alderperson Donahue's um, comments before. Uh, I just spent the 20 minutes of our time before, or maybe 15 minutes of our time before, fighting over what would amount to be about $20,000. This has already cost us over 100, and we can't afford for it to cost us anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes, three noes. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is 5.7. It's RC number 311 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 206 of 1819 by all the persons Reinfleisch and Born, directing the purchasing agent to seek requests for proposals for an operational and departmental structure study of the City of Sheboygan's Finance Department and Human Resources Department and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Reinfleisch. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Reinfleisch. Uh, continuing the studies like we did with the fire department last year, this is a study of our finance and human resource department. I, at the committee level, wanted to make sure that uh, the study didn't presuppose a combining of the departments, which the initial language could have been interpreted as. So. Mm -hmm. We're modifying the language for that. And I also thought that we ought to incorporate the uh, budgeting function, which isn't currently in one of those two, de in either of those two departments. We ought to incorporate that if we're studying our financial area, which the resolution does now include. So I'm comfortable with it. I think it's a good idea to have that study, but I don't want to presuppose conclusions. <laughs> Thank you for those comments. Are there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll?
Ten ayes. Motion passes. Um, items 5.8 through 5.46 will be referred to various committees of the new council. And then we'll move on to other matters uh, authorized by law, city attorney. 6.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2019, December 31, 2019, and June 30, 2020. That will be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety of the new council. I'd just like to thank everybody for a great council year this last year. And with that, I'll turn it over to Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn Sina Dai. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for all your work this year.